Oh, all right. What? I did not expect that. What the f heck? Oh, he looks like he's gonna put it on a U-Haul on the back of a trailer. What is going on? Snails. There are over 60,000 species on Earth. Snails are known to be very violent, hostile, even aggressive and unpredictable. Ah! On land, most are pretty small, getting up to about this size. But in the sea, well, sea snails are a different story. These guys can get freaking huge. This particular snail is so big, it's become a home for other snails. Not only are they giant, but aside from the shell, many sea snails are 100% edible. Oh, I think that's the poopy part. Yep, even that part. Today, we're going deep into the mysterious world of mollusks. Ooh, he's tickling. Our food may fight back. Oof, that was tough. But I believe we'll be victorious in the end. We're back on Fuok Island, land of giant clams. It's eating your knife. And giant fish. It is huge and powerful. Today, our seafood mission continues. Here they have a ridiculous amount of wild seafood, a lot of which I haven't even seen before. Let's do a little tour. First of all, I saw a shark. This here is a bamboo shark. Local folks call it baby shark. Cute, huh? Here, a distant relative of the shark, the round ribbon tail ray. They're usually quite docile, but if provoked, they could land a fatal blow. I saw a trigger fish. This derpy looking dude has a gap tooth grin that can actually bust through snails and other shellfish. Pretty badass. But what we came here for is right here below me. This is called a bamboo shoot snail. The bamboo shoot snail is the local name for the marlin spike shell. It's a little bit peeking out. The rest is swirled, spiraled back into this shell. This snail belongs to the auger shell family. They're long and slender with tightly wound whorls. Hey, no, not a big fan. It recedes back into the shell. This makes them beautiful, but nearly impossible to eat. In the wild, these guys are tough. In the kitchen, they're gonna be tough too. For most snails, steaming does the trick. After a few minutes of heat, they'll pop right out. Oh. But if you steam or roast the spike shell, the meat will retract all the way back into its thick, hard, layered shell, out of reach and gone forever. We're in the kitchen right now with Chef Dungan. He's gonna show us the special procedure for removing the meat. Take it away. Is that it? Ah, simple enough. It's like putting a steak in a tent. It's gonna pin the meat down, so when the meat reduces in size as it steams, it's not gonna recede back into the shell. It's gonna be forced to stay here and stay kind of accessible to us. Brilliant. Now, it's ready for the steam room. Next step, he's already got an anchor in there and he carefully pulls and twists. And my friends, that is how you do it. This guy is a pro, nothing wasted, nothing left inside. When you look at the size of the shell, you would think there'd be a lot more meat in there, right? And that shell is really more valuable than the meat itself. These can be sold for a good amount of money at a souvenir shop for people who like to put shells on their desk or whatever. The snails are returned to their shells before hitting the grill. The chef prepares a complex sauce of sugar, MSG, oyster sauce, chili sauce, pepper sauce, fua peppercorns, and kumquat. Dress that onto the snails, and they're ready for their final destination. Oh, it's still real hot. The chef cooks it, then stuffs it back in there, almost to shove it in the snail's face. Like, hey, we're gonna pull you out of your house twice. How do you feel about that? It uh, does not like it. They're roughly $5 a piece. That ain't cheap, but is it a good value? Let's find out. Cheers. Yummy, chewy, but it is a kind of fun chewiness. It's hard to explain, like it's pretty dense, thick meat that's like fun to rip your teeth through. <laughs> there is like a bit of a sour component. It could be the green peppercorn sauce. It almost has a little bit of a mineral taste to it and then just a nice pepper finish. I would say this is an ideal drinking food. Unfortunately, this is just Coke without the Jack Daniels. 500 million years on Earth has given snails time to develop into all sorts of weird shapes and sizes you could never even imagine. Like the snails waiting for us in our next restaurant. So we've made it into the restaurant right in front of me. A snail species I have never seen before. It's big, it's spiky, it's called a thorny conch. The thorny conch is the largest rock snail in the Indo-Pacific Ocean. Some of them can grow up to a foot long. These guys are excellent climbers. They can even climb directly on this super smooth glass. The shell spikes are perfect for keeping predators away. But they are no match for a guy with a flower shirt and a bandana. Applying about 20 pounds of pressure, nothing. So I've been told the technique is not that. You should actually kind of give it a little bit of a tickle. 
This guy right here is about three pounds. Its body wraps all the way back into the shell. On the outside, when it retracts in, it has this heel, this really thick, hard layer that protects it from, well, me right now. To lure this snail out, scorching hot water should do the trick. Oh, okay, I am in the kitchen with Wang. The snail does not have a name. Here's what's interesting. We're paying for the weight, the 100% weight of this creature. And there is a lot of shell here. From here, the chef inserts a scissors, and this is really just a simple crowbar technique. Oh, it's in a smooth extraction. That looks nuts. I mean, that is what it looks like, right? So this is the heel. This is that hard part that was protecting the snail. This, anyone, anyone? Anybody out there? Anyone? That's the poop sack. Can we eat this? Okay. Ang, ang, ang. We can eat it. And then as soon as I left, he proceeded to not use it at all. It's like, yes, you can eat it, but that doesn't mean you should eat it. Snail meat tends to have a chewy, rubbery texture. That means big chunks equals not fun. So the chef cuts the body into bite-sized pieces. Ah, he puts it back into its home. Well, that's thoughtful. Maybe the snail's gonna be fine, actually. It can make a full recovery. It might have recovered if they didn't grill it. They poured in a homemade sauce, let it bubble up, and here it is now. Anytime you serve an animal in its own body somehow, that's just really metal. I'm gonna use tiny fork. All right. Very nice. It feels pretty elegant somehow. Mmm. Oh, that's good pepper. It's more like a snack than anything else. Mmm. That's really good. He cut it to the right size. He got it nice and small. Snail can be very, very chewy, but these nice small cubes, most of them are pretty soft. It's really fun to chew through. The local fish sauce gives it this wonderful umami, just deep savoriness, and that combined with really fresh cracked pepper. Is it cracked or milled? Or fresh milled crack? God, I hope they put crack on here. That made me feel amazing. It's now time for the big daddy of all snail kind a creature you're gonna have to see to believe. Have you ever seen a loading strap used with seafood preparation before? What is going on? We've circled back to our first location where they have a snail 50 times bigger and 50 times harder to deal with. Right here, one of the biggest snails in the snail game. Over eight pounds is so big, it's become a home for other snails. This is called a unicorn snail. Unicorn snail is a local name derived from the horn made from a fold in the snail's shell. You can see a little bit of the muscle peeking through, but he's trying to get back, he's trying to hide. I'm gonna give him a little tickle. Ooh, he's ticklish. What if it just came out right now and grabbed my hand and bit me? Not ticklish. When referring to her highness, she should actually be addressed as a queen helmet conch, an extremely large sea snail species that can even prey on sea urchins. Oh, it's really, it's slimy, but it's hard like a muscle. It's powerful and strong. I wouldn't want to arm wrestle this. These marvelous mollusks can be found in the Red Sea, the Indian Ocean, off the southern coast of Africa, and on Etsy. <laughs> They're famous for their unique looks, but few people have ever tried the meat that's inside. What I'm most curious about is how the heck are they gonna pull this meat out of the shell? We're gonna find out soon. I was shown an interesting technique in the Bahamas. The chef there put a hole in the base of the shell, removing the snail's ability to hold on or suction inside the shell. Oh, just like yeah. that. So maybe they'll do that here. Oh, all right, what? I did not expect that. What the? Heck, have you ever seen a loading strap used with seafood preparation before? The way he's moving, it's like he's done this many times before. Possibly to other creatures, possibly to some humans too. We don't know. We don't want to ask. A queen helmet conch can grow up to one foot long. Also, it takes five years to reach this size. Wait, wait, what's he doing now? Oh, so now he just hooked the body. It's some kind of medieval torture device. So the extraction is underway. If he put the hooks in straight away and just pulled it out, it would certainly rip through the meat because the muscle of the snail is just too strong. So instead, he's hooked the meat, he's kept tension on there. Over time, the snail slowly get pulled out and then try to pull its way back in. And eventually it's gonna lose the battle and be tired enough that it can't tense up and we can just bloop, pull it out. That's the theory. But this particular conch is strong-willed and our torture device is simply no match. So, <sighs> the chef has decided to use a more efficient removal technique. And there goes my beautiful souvenir. Oh yeah! That is
is gnarly. Everything here is so exaggerated. The heel on this species is much smaller. That's kind of where its face would be, I believe. Is that a face? Some scientist is watching this like, oh, that's the butt. And we have the poop sack. They're calling it the liver and not poop. Are you gonna cook the liver? Great! The whole snail is steamed in julienne. Season with sugar, MSG, fried garlic, pepper, and ginger, then joined in a pot with veggies. All that's left is to dig in. Here, a beautiful preparation, steaming right to my face. Wait, what? What is that? What is that? You would touch my chopstick. What is that? It's black. Oh, isn't that so cool? All right, I'm gonna build up to that. I'm gonna get new chopsticks too. There we go. Fresh pear. I found my first bite. This is the head. Why is it so slimy? Very cool. What am I, twin? If you want to get to know somebody, don't pick this. Because you're going to spend the whole time just... Just give me one minute. I would say it's almost like a piece of squid times 10. This is very similar to other stales that I've had in that the hard parts are very hard. Super chewy, tough to get through, dense meat. This is a nice looking piece. Mm, this one's more like an abalone. Abalone is like my favorite type of denseness. This is like a, a higher level. I mean, at some point you just want to swallow it like a vitamin. I'm done chewing. My stomach will figure it out. This brings me to the last piece. I'm gonna break a little piece off. Oh, it's super gushy. All right, let's try it out. Cheers. this show, man. I don't want to do it anymore. It's bitter, it's intense, it's somehow sour at the same time. It has like this mineral, briny seafood essence of the sea floor. And the texture, it's like creamy, jiffy peanut butter. It's making me cry, I'm starting to tear up. It's so bad. You know, I've eaten a lot of weird things that are like, huh, that's pretty weird, but kind of good. There's nothing really redeeming about this at all. I had a tiny piece, like the half a grape size, and it was demonic. Oof, I lost a chunk of my soul on that one. Otherwise, I gotta say, I do enjoy the main part of the snail. If I had a friend come into Vietnam or Asia for the first time, this is definitely something I would have with them, just because it's such an adventure, and it's so new, and it's so different from anything you're gonna get in the USA. So you're not gonna find this in TGI Fridays anytime soon. But maybe, after this video, hmm? No, probably not. So what did we learn today? It's good to go outside, be adventurous, and try new things and new species, creatures that you've never seen before. But sometimes being too adventurous can lead you to eating snail liver, and that's probably one of the worst things you could do. So check yourself before you wreck yourself. Do not wreck yourself. Inspect yourself. Don't reject yourself. Respect yourself. Woke culture. It's annoying, unless it's in regards to food. Are you open to eating all creatures and cuisines? Then you, my friend, are culinarily woke. Link, description, go. Super challenging. One of the most challenging snails out there. It is, uh, can't think of. Joke, my joke um, generator broken. All right, I wanna reach in here now and it's putting up a fight. Ugh. Ugh. Got it. Oof, that was tough. He's closed up shop and he is not available for business. He must think I'm selling a magazine subscription. He must think I'm selling Girl Scout cookies. He must think I'm a Jehovah's Witness. It's hard for me to see it and for you guys to see it at the same time. Maybe if I just do that. Okay, now through my phone, I can see. This is a stupid idea. Let's find out. Let's go to another place now. No, come with me now. How can I not speak English now? This is like an arm or something? Oh, maybe this is the corn part. It's a unicorn. I think this is the corn part. Should we take this out of the video for being too stupid? Guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. And as always, goodbye. Just kidding, I mean, a piece.